Hello everyone and welcome to a video that is going to be a bit more technical and more complicated and it's about the FIDU D2. Uh, I'm going to try to answer two, uh, two of the most asked questions on my YouTube channel. Uh, how does the internal battery look like? Is it replaceable? What is uh, its size? Uh, is there a spare battery? How do you take it out? And I'm going to show that. And how can you install a second battery and extend the range of the D2 e-bike? And I'm also going to address that in uh, the same video. So let's start this without any more delays. Uh, first thing, it's very important. Uh, the easiest way to uh, do all that stuff, it's with the folded bike in uh, this position like you see it here on uh, one side and with this uh, exposed uh, you have two sets of metal plates one here one here you must be very careful with the polarity of these plates because you can uh, take this out and by mistake you can install it reversed the same goes to this one and if you mix one of them uh, in the other position that it will fit uh, this will uh, damage your e-bike beyond repair as it can uh, even catch fire and you are going to see why so to take this plate apart you just need to remove these two screws and underneath there you are going to get this and you can see that's the battery wires that go to the contact and it was in this position but there is no problem to install it reversed and if I install it in this position and if I connect it now uh, I'm going to supply reverse polarity to the controller which is probably going to blow up or can destroy the battery so be really careful with that then the second warning this is a 42 volt battery uh, it has a lot of discharge current and by mistake if you manage to make a short circuit between these two uh, wires or somewhere in the metal part here that's going to be a really big issue and again the battery could catch fire or even explode to get the original battery out uh, you just need to take these uh, wires a bit out and you can see this plug here with this screw which can be untightened by hand in my case in your case probably you are going to need some pliers or stuff like that and I have released this knot and you are going to remove the charging connector here and you are going to pull this plug not entirely out just leave it like that and now you can take the battery out and you can remove it just like that and this is the original battery 7.8 amp hour 36 volt uses 18650 cells 2600 milliamps for each cell so there should be uh, 30 cells in uh, this battery and has this foam pads to keep it from rattling inside the frame so that's the battery uh, really simple it has a charge port and a discharge port the uh, BMS is integrated so let's measure this up and see its uh, size and now let's see so the length of the battery is just 30 centimeters and it's 7 centimeter wide and four centimeter thick so you can even fit a slightly larger one and if you want to measure it with the pads with the pads has 8.5 uh, 8 centimeters so uh, that's the size and you can find batteries that will fit with uh, no problem uh, and you can replace that and now I'm going to install the battery back and uh, to install the secondary battery we'll actually use the other connector in uh, the other side so, and now I'm going to connect the charging cable 
all right and we need to fix the uh, screw here back and now it's important to put all these back carefully and uh, take care with the polarity so in my case the plus the red wire was on the uh, this part so I'm going to fit all the wires gently inside not to catch them in uh, this opening and uh, squash them by uh, between uh, catching them between the metallic plate and uh, the frame all right so that's fixed now I'm going to take this cap out where we are going to do the second battery install again the same screws are here on the sides and the same polarity that we should uh, take care of in case you are wondering here's the controller for the motor uh, this one is actually uh, really hard to take out because all the wires are very short and you either need to disconnect them or you need to actually uh, remove some of the clips that hold the wires so they will be longer and you can push them into the frame so you can pull them out which is impossible now especially how the wires go in that direction but you have a lot of slack here so you should uh, remove all those clips and then you can pull them in which I'm not going to do right now the next step is to decide where you are going to install the additional battery as you are going to need to measure some extra wires which you are going to add uh, for my test I'm going to install it here and I will need some wires from this bag to go uh, here and follow the original wires and you are going to insert them through this part here and we'll go in the rear part where the controller is as you have a big hole here and it's easy to insert the new wires to continue with the installation now I'm going to remove the plug from uh, this controller to the battery connector uh, they are kind of a bullet connector and that's very easy to remove and uh, now we are going to need the silicon wire and I'm using uh, XT60 connectors and uh, we are going to prepare a cable and the cable looks like this so I have soldered the connector here and I've uh, cut the cables uh, at a calculated uh, wire length that should be plenty of uh, reaching the battery on the outside and routing the wires through the hole there so let's fix the cable Okay, so the wire is now uh, routed and I'm going to show you some uh, details. Uh, this type of connector, uh, as you can see, has a special shape and you should always be uh, really careful with the polarity. Uh, as a general rule, the bike uses red and black, of course, for red for plus and uh, black for minus. Uh, you can use the same rule with your additional cable. So on this plug uh, you can check it and you will see that the connector is labeled here has a plus and here a minus also on this side it, it has a plus so the plus is on this part here on this pin while the minus is here and you can solder the wires uh, using the colors so you keep all on the same standard so the plug is now soldered and the same happens to your battery uh, this is a battery built by me but uh, it's using the same connector and you can see here the red cable goes to the uh, plus side which is the square part here and that makes it match the other connector so this cannot be inserted wrongfully and it will go only in that way and now you can see the red wire here with the plus here goes to the plus here and now the fun part starts 
you are going to have to solder the new wires uh, to the existing ones and red will go to the red and the black will go to the black and then you have to insulate them really well the easiest way to solve uh, this uh, problem is actually to uh, take some insulation off uh, from the middle of the wire without cutting it and this is enough and now from this wire I'm going to remove a bit of uh, the insulation as well of course there are special tools to do this better but uh, uh, we can work with what we have currently and now I'm going to kind of tie this wire here just a bit and I'm going to twist it make it like a single thick wire and now I'm going to use my soldering iron Alright, so first one is uh, done and you can see the uh, solder has uh, completely entered between the strands of the wire and this is now one single metal piece, it's solid, it doesn't move, it doesn't untwist, so it's perfect. Uh, I did a mistake here, I can show you a trick. Uh, now you can use duct tape to isolate this, but I could have uh, used heat shrink because heat shrink uh, can go through over this one and I could actually put the heat shrink on this wire there and then just pull it over this two and uh, make it shrink here which I'm going to do for the other wire. now this one is done also and I can uh, bring the heat shrink over just like that and I've made it and now I'm going to make this thing shrink you don't want to overdo it because uh, uh, you can potentially melt the heat shrink that will make it uh, brittle all right but i'm not going to leave it just like that i'm also going to use some extra duct tape for uh, extra protection and i still need to cover this one and that was it with uh, soldering now i need to uh, connect the wires back together the original wires for the controller and black goes to black be careful to connect them properly and red goes to red be sure that the original insulator covers the metal parts of the connectors so they do not touch themselves 
or between them as they can uh, short circuit really easy uh, if you want to uh, be even more safe than this you can add a bit of duct tape over them as no one is going to see the ugly duct tape inside here and better to be safe than sorry and now it's time to put back the cap here uh, taking care of the polarity so red is on the on this side on my bike also going to pull the excess of the wires outside and carefully will uh, kind of fold this like that so they will go in without jamming them too hard and it sits properly now I'm going to put the screws back And now we have installed the external battery port and comes a really important uh, thing. Do not connect this to the external battery right now. First step, fully charge the internal battery until the uh, green LED on your uh, charger is lit up. So this is full. Also fully charge the external battery until that one is full. Be sure that both batteries have the same voltage rating, so 36 volts nominal, 42 when it's fully charged. You can see here on the charger says 42 volts, while the battery is 36 volts, that's how batteries work. Uh, fully charged voltage is 42. And only when they are fully charged, both of them, you can connect them. Uh, that is because um, if you don't have a uh, voltage meter to check for instance the battery on the bike has 39.6 volts and let's say the external battery has uh, 37 volts or 36 volts uh, when you are going to connect the batteries together uh, it will create a powerful spark because of the voltage difference and the battery that has higher voltage will try to charge as fast as possible the battery with lower voltage and the current uh, exchange between the two batteries will be so high that it can melt wires can burn the internal battery controller uh, it can do a lot of damage or catch fires so uh, when you fully charge both batteries you don't have to ch check the voltage uh, if both of them are full they are going to have the same voltage and there is no uh, voltage going from one battery to the other so there is no spark there is no problems and you can connect them together all right so the bike is folded uh, back to its original shape this is the connector and if everything has uh, went as it should uh, if I'm going to test the voltage on this plug I should have the exact voltage of the bikes battery and it has currently 39.6 volts so it's almost full and I'm going to fill it up to 100% same as with my uh, battery here and then I'm going to connect them uh, both together and now both are full and I'm going to connect them together and that was it no spark no uh, drama and you might ask now how you are going to use the battery uh, how you are going to charge it uh, well the original charger is okay and as long as this battery remains connected to the bike and you are not going to disconnect this you can use the bike as you have used it until now you can charge it with the original charger to the original port and that's it you don't have to mess with this battery uh, if you buy a battery that has uh, two plugs usually they come with a charge plug and a discharge plug uh, you can also uh, connect the provided charger to this plug and what will happen is that when this battery charges through this plug it will output current that will go through these wires and will charge the battery that is inside the bike so actually this uh, cable uh, 
uh, keeps the batteries connected in parallel and they sh always share the load and the voltage and if one battery charges it will automatically level the voltage on the other battery so you don't have to disconnect them and charge them separately uh, you can either charge through this plug or through the bike plug or if you are in a hurry you can use two chargers and you can charge the bike with the bike charger and you can also charge the uh, external battery with the external battery charger if you have one for the external battery I'm going to add some links for where to get a battery this one is built by me but I do have uh, a charger for it so you can now double charge double charging it will take roughly the same amount of time that you was previously experiencing with one charger and with the original battery so you are not uh, charging two times faster but actually you are charging two times faster because uh, charging time will be the same but you are going to have double the capacity so in the same amount of time with two chargers you are charging two batteries and that's the double amount of capacity in the same unit of time and that's how this thing works so uh, you don't have to worry of disconnecting it if something happens and you need to take this battery off and you run the bike without it then uh, when you want to reconnect the batteries together always first fully charge both of them so they are at the same voltage and only them reconnect them otherwise you risk of uh, having different voltage between the batteries and uh, generating problems and as simple as that I now have power from both of the batteries and it should work right away and it works just fine so that was it for now I hope that uh, you have enjoyed this uh, guide and you have seen all the information that uh, you wanted be sure to follow my next uploads where I'm going to start doing various other mods and fixes to other Fido bikes such as the L2 model uh, and there are some things that I plan for it and hopefully soon I'm going to be able to do those. Until then, see you and bye bye.